This is Crazy Prison Stories. So what's going on? It's Sean right here, and I want to tell y'all my story about how it is for us going to breakfast over here in the prison I'm at, which is New Jersey State Prison. So this prison I'm at is made up of three compounds that run everything completely different. You have the north compound, you have the south compound, you have the west compound. Now, the west compound been around the longest since 1865. That's what it says on all the pillars in the hallways. That's when it was established and everything. Uh, the north compound and south compounds are relatively newer and were built, I think, in the 90s and the early 2000s, and they're completely different. Now, on the north and south compounds, the cells are bigger, right? You have like a slot in door. You don't have, you have a window in your cell, but you can't open the window. You have central heat. You have central air through the ventilation systems. And the police that work over there, they're in the booth pressing buttons, letting you out throughout the day. Uh, they have pantries on the units where they get food sent over to them from the cookhouse, which is located over on the west compound. And then you had the pantry workers that prepare the food before they run their breakfast over there. But I'm not on them compounds, so I just want to let you know how it is over there. I'm on the west compound, and it's completely different. You have a right side, you have a left side. So you on the right side, you got one right, two right, four right, and six right. Then on the left side, you have two left, four left, and six left. And depending on what unit you on, you have more or less... Uh, the amount of people that's over there. Some units you have like 125. Some people you have, some units you have maybe about like 135 people. On the unit I'm on, it's a little bit smaller, so it's only 87 people over there. And each unit, though, it has four stories. So you have one tier, two tier, three tier, four tier. Majority of the bigger units, you have about 30 to 34 cells on each tier. And on the unit I'm on, we actually only have about 22 on three of the tiers and 21 on the flats. That's the bottom tier right there. Now, the cells that we got over here is different, too. It's like the cells are metal bars, and you got like a little food slot that they could pass food through in case we don't lock down or anything like that, but it's like open metal bars, so you can hear everything that's going on around you. You can smell everything that's going on around you. And depending where you locate it out on the tear, you can kind of see everything that's going on around you, right? If you think of the cells, think of how a parking lot is that y'all park your cars in. The cells are a little bit smaller than that, and that's just how they are. So over here, when you want to go to breakfast, you actually have to walk down to the mess hall and it's dubbed the doom of death because a lot of stuff that didn't happen in that mess hall over the course of the years, especially back in the day. But that's what we got to go to eat. So the COs, they do their counts on first shift. They shift start at 6 o'clock from 6 to 2, but they do their count. They get in a little early. They do their count to switch at about like 5.30 a.m. So they walk by, they call your name, make sure you're alive. And if you are in a dead sleep, that means they're going to wake you up. And if you're already up, then you up when they come past. So you know they got to make sure that we're alive every morning. Now, on the West Compound, as I said, there's no ventilation system. It's completely different. So we have actual windows on the units. So we breathe the same air that the outside world does when the windows are open. But the only difference is we don't consider it free air because we're not out there in the outside world. So this is how we look at it. But we still get to breathe the air. So the smells that are happening from, like, the different places around Around us, we get the smell of food. If it's bad smells, we get the smell of them as well. So when you wake up and you can feel a cool breeze that sweep through the unit and you probably can hear some people that got their TVs on real small. You probably hear some people that's playing music in their cell or playing uh, music through their tablet. But outside of, like, them faint sound that you can hear audibly, verbally from your cell, it's completely dead silence. Like, and a lot of people, they just take that time to think whatever thought you want to think in your bed. Like, me personally, I use that time as my early morning devotional time, prayer time, because there's nothing going on. I want to get my day started in the right way, and it's not loud. So by the time 6.15 hits, you'll start hearing the cell doors open for some people getting in the shower early because there's only five, five shower heads 
and they all right next to each other about a couple of feet apart. But you in there, there's five people in the shower at a time. So that's how it is on the West Compound. On the North Compound, they got own individual showers. They fancy. They got, like, their own little place you walk in for the shower, but it's not. It's in an open area over here on the West Compound. So outside of people getting in the shower before it started to get full, you'll have the AM chair workers come out so they can start collecting people bowls who may want hot water early in the morning, whether they want to get some early morning coffee, tea, or they might be making their own breakfast because we have two hot water machines that's located under the tear. So outside of them, then you have people that's coming out to uh, try to get on the kiosk first, I uh, guess to check and see if they got messages or whatever the case may be, maybe download music or whatever they want to do on it. So this is what's happening around 6.15 in the morning. And each unit has two COs that work the unit. So you have... Uh, a uh, CEO that work one and two tier, you have one that work three and four tier, right? And that's how it is designed on each uh, unit period. So each unit also have regular CEOs. So you have them, the two regulars, they your uh, ones that work five days a week. So they might have work, say, uh, let me see, one of them might work, say, Tuesday through Saturday. The other one might work Sunday through Thursday, the two regulars, and then you have a relief. And he would make up the four days out of the week that when the regulars ain't here, them two days that one ain't here and the other two days that they ain't there. So for them, they kind of like get a feel for how everybody is because they work the tears, they work the units. And what they do is they stay around us every day, so they know our schedule. They know who will, will probably wake up to go to breakfast and who won't because going to breakfast here is an option. So like it ain't mandatory that you got to go. If you don't want to go, if you don't want to eat, that's on you. That's how they look at it. But if you want to, then that's on you too. So, like, going to breakfast here is an option, like I said. So, normally the count clear at about 6.30 in the morning. And they start calling out the units one by one over the radio. And, like, say they start with the right side. So, they call out all the right side units, and we all go down there together. So when the police start calling mess out on the unit, you got to, like, literally walk down the stairs depending on what tier you is. So that depends on how many stairs you got to walk down. And we go into, like, this little open area that's right off of the unit where we got to wait by this big gate for them to buzz us, buzz us out of that gate. So when they buzz us out of that gate, they count up to maybe about, like, 17 people. Then they tell us to close the gate because they only want 17 people at a time going through. When you get into this area right here, this area is called the Rotunda. And out there, you probably got about 10 CEOs out there, some understanding with their little nightclubs in their hand. They got helmets on. And if you walk out there, you got to go through a metal detector. So, like, the pathway from each unit to go to the mess hall, it leads to the metal detector right there in the middle of the floor, and you got to go through it. So going through the metal detector, you have some police on the other side of that metal detector. You might get pulled over and get past search even after you go through. Like, that's the craziest thing right there, but... That happens, going in and coming out. So, like, while you out there, you might see the commissary people pushing the cars to the units that they drop in the canteen off of that morning. And you might see people that's coming out there in the general rotunda area because they have traffic control out there where people got to get their badges in order to go to, on whatever path. So nine times out of ten, early in the morning, Around 6.30, people is going out there to get their medical badges, which they have to go through a whole different way, opposite of the mess hall, so they can go to the North Compound to go get their uh, meds or whatever the case they may be doing. So when you go through the metal detector, pat down, whether you get pat down or not, you got to go down a couple of steps, and you got to get buzzed into another gate. When you get buzzed into this gate, this room is like the size of probably like the average size bathroom. You got like a couple of exposed wires and pipes over your head. If it's summertime, you in there, you feeling all the heat. Like it'd be so hot in that area from them pipes that you actually can smell the heat. And that's the crazy thing. And you got to wait till all 17 men come in before they budge you through the next gate, which is actually the mess hall. But while you in there, like you, you so much that be going on because you can hear all the people that's in the mess hall that's talking. You probably got like a couple of hundred people that's in there. You see some people that's in line. You probably can smell the burnt food, you're probably standing next to somebody that probably ain't even take a shower yet or they just got bad hygiene. So that just be the crazy thing right there. But, like, once you get inside the mess hall, it's like a very big open area.